Hi, and welcome to DCO Graphics Studio. What I want to show in this video is how to create openings um, in that script where I created, you know, some walls. How to create the openings on those walls. Um, so I'll be going over the whole thing from the beginning, uh, just in case any of you have not seen the other video. Um, so we're going to start with a polyline. Now we can create it parametrically or we can draw it here. What I'm going to do is actually create a parametrically, but first I'll go here and type in units. And I'm going to be using feet. Feet and inches is okay. Now I'm going to start here with a rectangle. So I'll go here to rectangle and plug in an X and Y size. So let's go here to 30. So this is going to be a 30 by 30 foot footprint. I'll take this rectangle and offset it. So offset curve, we'll plug in that rectangle into the curve input and go to a negative value. So it goes the opposite way and plug in a value of three point, uh, let's just say 5.5 .5 inches. And since this is an in inches and we are using feet, we actually need to divide this by 12. So division by 12, and that turns it into inches. So this is going to be wall thickness. And this is going to be building size. So far we have two parameters. Now we need to create that surface between those two. So I'll bring in a boundary surface and this, like I said, I've gone over this tutorial before where I kind of go over it fairly quickly um, or fair, uh, in a, you know, step by step. So this time I'm actually going fairly quickly. So I'll plug in both of those into the input for boundary surface and flatten the input. Now I'll take that surface and extrude it. To give it a wall height so I'll go to an extrude component and plug in the surface into the base and the direction we're going to go unit Z and for the factor we're going to plug in a height so let's go here to 12 and when you bring in a 12 it's going to actually go all the way to 100 I'll change this down to maybe 20 being the max. This way we have like a 12, 12 foot height for the wall. So this is going to be wall height. So I'm right clicking on that slider, wall height. All right, so this is the basics of it. Uh, here's one thing that I feel is pretty critical to share is since we want to be able to plug in any polyline into this script, we want this the inputs of these coming out of one location. So this is where I actually double click on the wire and get a what this is called a relay. And what that does is creates kind of like a in between stage where we can actually plug in instead of this, or actually we would do this one and then plug in this one into this one and delete this one. This way, now when we set a curve, let's say I double click here and go to a curve component and let's draw a polyline here. And then C to close. We'll go here to this set one curve and plug this into this one. And you'll see that it'll change it to that one. So this is why you want the logic to go off of multiple, like off of kind of one input and then have that then split off into multiple ones. So just to go back, let's take this. I'll delete that polyline and go back to that rectangle. And this is what makes it fully parametric where I actually created this rectangle inside of Grasshopper. So I don't need anything else other than this Grasshopper script for this to work. So we basically created the walls like we've, we've done before. 
Now let's take this a uh, step further and now let's create those openings. So what we want to do first is take that rectangle and we want to extrude that rectangle again, but not by after creating this boundary surface because that's how we created the walls initially is offsetting it, creating a boundary surface and extruding that. So what we actually want to do is extrude. So we can copy this tap alt and it'll make you co a copy and we can take this and extrude the original rectangle but instead of using this rectangle from here we can use it from the relay this way it actually comes out of this one so when we set let's say another uh, curve we'll just leave this curve component here when we set another curve we can just plug that in and it'll do it to all of them uh, what we want to do now is notice that we have all of those surfaces. So we want to actually take this and go to uh, deconstruct BREP. Because at the moment, this is all joined into one. So we want to deconstruct it into the four different faces. So we'll take this and disable the preview and take um, those surfaces those faces and now we're going to scale them um, we're going to scale them twice and one is going to be for the overall size which is off of the outside face and then the height will be determined and then we can also move them up and down so um, let me show you we'll take those faces and we'll get the center point of those so we'll go to faces plug those into the geometry for this uh, area component. Now we have the center point of those faces, which we can scale. So we'll bring in a scale component. Scale component, we're going to plug in the centroid into the center and the faces into the geometry. So as you can see, automatically, it's going to give us a scaled face, which we want to use a factor with. So let's go here to 0.888 this way we have three decimal points and we can always change this up and down like this but as you can see it only allows us to scale it in one uh, kind of proportionally from the center of course we can change the location if we move the center point which is something else that I can get into if you if you guys would like to but just for the simplicity of this uh, tutorial we're going to take this and we're going to scale it again in the vertical direction. So scale, non-uniform. We're going to take this geometry, plug it into the top one and the center point into the plane. Now we want this to scale in the Z direction, but we want to either, uh, we want to either scale it up or down. So we want to go uh, one, between zero, then less than 2.000. Now here, if we go to 0.9, plug that into the Z vector and disable the preview on the one before, now we can basically center it and then we can adjust the height this way. And also this is going to be a rectangular opening. Um, we can also do circular right if we instead of uh, when we extrude these out we can use those as a reference plane to create a circle uh, but for this example i'll be using basically the scaled down face which is going to be a rectangle or something of that shape now we can take this and we can round off the edges if we want to do a uh, fillet edges of this but we want to extrude them out perpendicular to their face. So we'll go here to extrude. And we'll extrude this geometry, plug that into the base. Then in which direction? Well, we'll use an amplitude component for this, where we can use our face as a vector. And now for the vector, we'll plug in here the direction. And now for amplitude, that's going to be the thickness of um, that window or how far that window is going to go so basically we can actually use the exact wall thickness 
plus this this value here giving us the exact thickness so what amplitude is doing is saying extrude each one of those faces perpendicular to the face by the same amount as the wall which is this value So now we can take this uh, plane, disable the preview. Let's take a look at this uh, view up here and let's do a Boolean difference. So solid difference and plug in these B reps into B and then into A, we're going to plug in the walls. Now let's disable the preview on the original walls and disable the preview on the B reps. And now let's also disable the preview on all of this stuff back here. And so now it's basically programmed a opening. On any uh, polyline that we create here. So if I get kind of crazy here, is doing very random shape and we'll set one curve here and plug that in to all of those as you can see it's proportional to each one of those faces but it will create those openings we can also bring back here. bring back the openings and we can give them um, change the color we can bake them um, if we want to that's one of the cool things and now we can even array them vertically but the idea is to show you how you can create those openings and now it, within those openings <clears throat> we can come back here and let's preview those planes and in here we can subdivide that using something like let's say lunchbox using diagonal grid and now we have well that doesn't look as great let's try a different pattern here so we'll take let's see those and plug in let's keep it basic and let's do three way subdivisions here so three in the u and three in the v Something like this. You know, something like that. Either way, that kind of gives you an idea of how to program that. And we can also go back to this rectangle if we wanted to. Do it this way. Um, then we can do a pattern in here. We can use point attractor, curve attractor, things like that to kind of create those openings. Um, so if you have any further questions, if that didn't make sense, uh, make sure to let me know. I'll make sure to have this on the YouTube portion. So if you want to check those out, make sure to become a member. And uh, thank you very much for being here. And I hope to see you next time.